What's going on guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. In this episode, we're going to be continuing our build on the VR38 block. But first, here's an Evo 9 wagon. They do look pretty cool, with all the functionality and performance to go with it. And he stalled it. Anyway, back to the block build. So if you remember, the last time we left off, we were just checking the main bearing clearances on the VR38 block and stock brand new crank. This involves some measuring and checking against the engine manual and then installing the bearings and talking everything down so that we could check the clearances to see how they stacked up. The measurements and checking against the engine manual allowed us to pick the right bearings which gave us perfect clearances. We used plastic gauge and you can see here some of the material that gave us the clearance. Since then we had to send all of the rotating assembly to the machine shop for balancing. However, there were significant delays due to issues with Manly. This basically delayed everything by about six weeks as a result. Anyway, here's the car with all of its markings from the recent day I did at West Sydney Dragway where I was testing the 100 to 200 kilometer times and doing some testing on the MoTeC to see how everything was performing. So basically the machine shop noticed that one of the wrist pins was different to all of the others. I then got in touch with the distributor for Manly here in Australia, but you can see here in the photos, we still received the wrong wrist pin. After a lot of back and forward, we finally received a brand new set of six wrist pins for the car. We didn't trust a mix and match job, so we asked for a full set of six to make sure they're all the same. Once the new wrist pins arrived, I had to do a lot of running around to swap them over. It wasn't exactly the best day to be running around as it was 39 degrees outside here in Australia. And that wasn't even the peak temperature for the day. So I picked up all the pistons from the machine shop so that I can go ahead and swap over the wrist pins to the new wrist pins that were sent over. On the way back, I picked up some Gatorade and some Snickers as I was getting hungry. I usually wouldn't buy chocolate, but I am on a mini bulk, so the extra calories didn't matter. So here we are at Just Jab to exchange the wrist pins because the supplier for Manly here in Australia sent the new wrist pins to Just Jab for the exchange. Here you can see the old wrist pin that was sent with the kit. It has a chamfer where the one they sent through now does not have a chamfer and is the new design. Here you can see the two different pins side by side. The old one is this one here, which has a chamfer on the edge uh, and is a bit shinier. And here is the new design, which is not as shiny and doesn't really have a deep chamfer on the edge. I did the guys at Just Jap a bit of a favor and returned all of the wrong wrist pins back to Faber Performance, the local supplier. And now I'm back at CMB Performance, arguably one of Sydney's best machine shops to return all of the correct parts for balancing. I'm glad the saga was finally over as it was 41 degrees outside. So for all of the Americans, that's about 106 degrees Fahrenheit. By now I was super hungry and grabbed a huge feed from Frango. They have the best grilled chicken burgers and chicken. I got the double grilled chicken burger with a quarter chicken, chips and the chili mayo which is amazing. Of course you need to have chili mayo on the burger, it's just too good. I'm 100% sure I'm going to be in a food coma after all of this but since I'm on a bulk it's worth it. Here's the chili mayo that I got on the side, you really have to have this as well. After smashing the double grilled chicken patty burger it was on to the quarter chicken. It wouldn't be Portuguese chicken without chili on the actual chicken too. Honestly, Frango's is amazing after any gym session or if you're bulking. One eternity later. We now have a fully balanced rotating assembly. Pistons, rods, crank, everything. Let's check out how that looked. So you can see this particular piston doesn't look like it's had any material removed. The whole point of balancing is to make sure that your pistons and rods are perfectly matched with each other. This is all for better harmonics of the engine. You can see here on this particular piston, some of the material has been removed on the side there for balancing purposes. 
A good machine shop will remove material in a way that it doesn't affect the structural integrity of the actual piston or rod. They'll also do it in a way where it doesn't impact on the actual strength either. So you should be able to push a lot of power while having perfectly balanced rods and pistons and crank. You can see here on this edge where they've removed some material, whereas the other edge hasn't had any material removed. This is not worth doing at home and it's best to leave to the pros. Let's have a look at the rods. Just looking at them like this, you can't actually tell any material has been removed until you look a little bit closer and you can see here on the bottom edge some of the material that's been removed to get it balanced. Here's the crank, so let's have a closer look to see if we can spot where material has been removed. You can see here where some of the material has been ground down a little bit. And if we look a little bit closer, you can see some of the material from here and then some on this side here. Overall, it looks like this particular crank was in pretty good shape and pretty well balanced, so not much material needed to be removed. Let's check out some of the other builds in progress. Can you guess what this engine is? Here's the back view and a view from the side. Have you figured it out yet? If not, here's a view from the front to see if that gives you a better idea. Time's up, this is a 2JZ. This is an insane build using a Jun 3.2 litre stroker kit with a huge Garrett turbo. This build combination and turbo should easily be capable of reaching over 1500 horsepower. The next one in the works is a Nitto 2.2 4G63 build with a big Garrett turbo. Anyway, back to the VR38 block, which has now been disassembled once again. You can see here the main bearings are in there still. Now, last time we didn't torque down the oil squirters, so this time we'll do that. So they're being torqued down to 27 Newton meters. The VR38 has three of them, so it's pretty quick and easy to get them torqued down. Next, we can put the crank on a workbench so that we can inspect it and give it a good cleaning. Obviously, having come back from a machine shop, you will expect little metal shavings to be on the crank and in its crevices, so this really does need to be cleaned out. The last thing you want is metal shavings in your brand new built engine. Here's a closer look at the 4G63 from earlier and I'll zoom in a little bit on the turbo so that you can have a look. It looks really well built with high quality parts that have been chosen for this particular build. The billet rocker covers look really good. Anyway, back to the crank. So here it's been cleaned out and now we're just letting it drip dry a little bit and we're going to be using the air compressor to blow out any little metal shavings that might be in the nooks and crannies. After this, we'll be using a magnetic tool to get the last of the metal shavings. Now that we've got the crank mounted in the block, it's time to get assembly. Since this motor is going to be sealed today, the next thing that goes on is the rear main seal, which you can see here. Next, we've got the main girdle on a workbench as we're going to be applying a liquid sealant. Once again, following the engine manual to see in which way we need to put the sealant. This is time consuming and does take quite a lot of patience to make sure you get this right. Now that the sealant is on, we've got the girdle back onto the block. The block is now sealed and the bolts on the side have been tightened down. There was also an O-ring gasket which went in between the block and the girdle, which I didn't get a chance to show. Next, we've got the ARP main studs, which have to be torqued down in a specific order. First, we're just hand tightening them to get them in place. And once they're in place, the big torque wrench will come out and they'll be torqued down to 70 foot pounds. There is a specific order to follow, so do review the engine manual if you are trying this at home. And done, all torqued down. The next part of the process is actually very long and tedious, so this probably won't be shown on camera. Here's how the VR38 looks now without the rods and pistons, but you can see everything else is installed for the next stage. If you look closely here, you can see the oil squirters near the crank down the bottom there. I have to admit, it does look really, really good. Obviously, being brand new, you can see the cylinders are in perfect condition. Yeah. 
You'll notice here that there's no actual engine number. It's just been listed as VR38. We don't know how much of a problem that will be later down the track, but I guess we will find out. The next stage involves filing down the piston rings to get the right clearances. This can take anywhere from one hour to two hours as you need to do them individually and check them against the cylinder at the same time. Since this is a very boring task, it's probably better to be done off camera. On this day, we did actually finish all of the piston rings. So the next step is to actually install them and install the rods and pistons and we'll have a finished short block. You can see here one of the piston rings in the cylinder and we're going to be using a feeler gauge to check the ring gap. Anyway, it's already been a few hours and that's enough for today. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next one when we finish the short block.